something that is not always appreciated about the Audacious class is that they're effectively the Royal Navy's equivalent of the Essex class, as US and UK carrier development was slightly offset in terms of time. So you have Ark Royal, which was then followed by the Yorktowns, which were then followed by the Illustrious and Implacable classes, which were then followed by the Essexes, and then the Audacious class. Those last two classes representing the two respective navies' first forays into non-treaty restricted carrier design. The same building program for 1940 that had seen the two implacable class laid down also called for a third ship the following year. Since there was some time until this vessel was to be laid down and implacable represented an iterative improvement on the illustrious class, it was decided to try and further iterate with this vessel. But by the autumn of 1941, it was clear that work had effectively created a new class, and the detailed design work on what was to have been a larger implacable with four-inch flight deck armour and two hangars was cancelled, and a completely new design was assembled. Amongst the new design considerations was a near tripling of the anticipated maximum weight of a combat aircraft, rising from just over the weight of a fully loaded albacore to just over twice the weight of two fully loaded Avengers. Due in part to the knowledge of this latter aircraft, a much taller hangar height was also specified, rising to the 17 foot 6 inches found in US carriers of the period, as opposed to the 14 foot that had been accepted in earlier classes as a compromise due to the weight of the armoured flight deck. This increase was in large part possible due to the ships being much larger, at almost 38,000 tonnes standard displacement and a fraction off of 50,000 tonnes at deep load, the new carrier would boast an 800-foot flight deck, just shy of 400-foot total length for the upper hangar, and a smaller 172-foot long lower hangar. This was, however, a little bit heavier than planned, so the ships ended up only making just under 31 knots instead of their design speed of 32 knots, powered by 152,000 shaft horsepower pushed through four screws. But wartime shortages and conflicts in building programs meant that although the first of four planned ships was laid down in October 1942, the first hull wouldn't hit the water until 1946, which meant that none of the class would see action in World War II. Four ships were originally ordered, but with the even larger Malta class design following hot on the heels of the Audacious class, the last vessel of the class, HMS Africa, was reordered as a Malta class vessel, and the losses to the Royal Navy carrier fleet in the early part of the war meant that names were swapped around. So the Royal Navy never actually got HMS Audacious. She was launched, but then renamed Eagle before commissioning. The second ship would also be named after a lost carrier, HMS Ark Royal, with a third, presumably now HMS Audacious, being cancelled at the start of 1946. This long build time meant that wartime lessons could be incorporated. The forward lift was moved backwards slightly so that instead of a lift at either end of the hangar, a section of hangar was now ahead of that lift, which divided off an area for aircraft maintenance that wouldn't interfere with the transfer of active aircraft to the flight deck. Larger weapons lifts were also installed, and when completed, the ships boasted a fairly deadly anti-aircraft complement of 16 4.5-inch guns in twin mounts, four per side, with a pair of mounts fore and aft on the four corners of the widest part of the flight deck. This was accompanied in Eagle by eight sextuple, two twin, and nine single 40mm bofers, and Ark Royal receiving two less twin 4.5-inch on account of changes to her flight deck arrangements, as well as two less sextuple mounts, but three more singles, with all guns guided by radar. Like the Essexes, they could initially operate over 100 aircraft, in theory, although this would drop to around 80 by the time Eagle entered service as aircraft had grown larger, a trend that would see the air group gradually drop to 60, then 50, and then eventually down to 38 as their careers progressed. Eagle would be completed to approximately the original design, whilst Ark Royal was delayed post-war, extensively modified, and therefore launched as the world's first carrier built with an angled flight deck instead of being refitted with one, along with steam catapults, a mirror landing system, and a side lift. Eagle would be heavily refitted in the 1950s to take up many of these advances, leapfrogging her sister in a number of ways, including the installation of surface-to-air missiles.
The cancellation of the CVA-01 class carriers meant Ark Royal was in turn refitted in the 1970s, although due to the delays in her construction right back at the start of her life and the subsequent degradation of a partly finished hull, she was generally more difficult to keep running than her sister ship. In a move typical of the utter genius of the UK government in the late 1960s, they'd scrapped the ship's successors on the grounds of costs, only to spend about as much money refitting Ark Royal and the two Tiger class to provide a lesser and shorter-lived overall capability. Eagle, in any case, was taken out of service in 1972 and used as a source of spares for her sister, finally being scrapped in 1978, whilst Ark Royal was kept in service until 1979 and then sold for scrap in 1980. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.